Phil, joining us on set this morning. Clinical psychologist Daryl Joseph. Daryl, good morning. Thank you for joining good us. Good morning, Hima. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. Not a very positive note to start this interview on. Uh, Trinidad and Tobago, again, faced with a situation we see uh, less than one week. Yes. That corpse was found in the yeah. Beetham landfill. Can you imagine the level of desperation and hopelessness in the person who would have taken that course of action? You know, when people become very depressed, um, they become capable of doing things that ordinarily would seem impossible or at the very least improbable. But when serious depression sets in, one of the characteristics is that sense of hopelessness, where people feel that there's no better option than to take a drastic one. So a person, for example, who attempts to commit suicide does it because at that point in time, suicide seems like the only rational way out. Now, suicide seeming the most uh, rational way out. Mm. What are some of the warning signs that sometimes a fam sometimes families mm. may also see this as the only option? Yes. What What are some of the warning signs that a community and that friends may be aware of or yes. that they can look for to know that, you know what, instead of that child ending up in the dump, that mm. child could have been in another home in some That's sort right. of... That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, I mean, first of all, it's unfortunate that people take that course of action because there are agencies that will look after a child that, is, um, that can't be cared for. All right, um, But uh, as I was saying, a person who would commit such an act has to be in a state of depression. And some of the characteristics of depression include things like the person being very withdrawn and not wanting to mix and intermingle with other people and, and, and normal social situations. Um, the person not enjoying things that they typically enjoy. So the activities and things that they normally would do, they no longer get any pleasure or any benefit from those things. Um, things like a lack of appetite, uh, either lack of or the opposite, right? right? Mm -hmm. Eating too much or too little, um, inability to sleep or sleeping too much, and a general sense of, of sadness and, and a general sense of hopelessness in that person. A general sense of hopelessness. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're going to do now, Dial was actually invited here to speak on the topic body morphia disorder or body distortion. And it's something that seems to be affecting a lot of young girls in particular. Mm -hmm. If you have a teenage daughter at home, I think that you should definitely look at the video we're going to share with you at this time, and then we'll begin our conversation with Daryl on this topic. I have a brand new hairdo with my eyelashes all in curl. Well, I float as the clouds on air do. I enjoy being a girl. Men say I'm cute and funny and my teeth aren't teeth but pearl. Thank you. I just lap it up like honey. With a restless soul She moved west to California Are certain parts of your body a big problem? A big problem needs a powerful solution But once you change your name Well, the pieces fall Now she hardly recognizes Herself at all And there's never any rain And you wanted a hollow little game And you wanted looking for a three You've done it all So long Put your blue jeans back on Girl, go home Remember Hollywood's not America So long Put your blue jeans back on Girl, go home Remember Hollywood's I decided to have a breast augment procedure because I was self-conscious. Oh, yeah. And everybody heals from somewhere else. You can make a million dollars. You might lose yourself. And you can take the heat. Will your heart grow cold? They say acting's just pretending. You're depicting here? Um, my arms are very twiggy and small, but they're long. And this whole area of my body here, I feel, is overweight and it's not proportionate to the rest of me. Don't do 
Well, the exact thing should be Hollywood is not the world, but yet we're inundated with these images of perfection. Young girls looking at what they think beauty, size, the ideal mm -hmm. concept of beauty, mm -hmm. and you, you're now faced with that. And you know, it's a little uh, jarring to look at the amount uh, of information that just comes jammed to you at the yeah. same time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I think the only saving grace with that particular video is that it is all foreign images, and we're not seeing local images to. You know, to make it even more um, impactful yeah. or powerful in a sense, all right? But um, so we're talking about body dysmorphic disorder and so on. Um, it's, it really has to do with uh, a person's acceptance of their physical self, and in particular, uh, either a rejection of an imagined flaw or imagined flaws, or some strong exaggeration of maybe minor flaws in an individual. Where does it start? Because, you know, everyone, I, I probably think that I need to lose 10 pounds. Everyone has their issues. So yeah. when does it become so extreme that it is an actual yeah. disease, body morphia disorder? Yeah. The, um, the manual that psychiatrists and psychologists use to determine disorders and so on, it says once there is serious impairment of social and occupational functioning. And what that typically means, that's a, that's a kind of, sounds like a broad term, but it means when the problem becomes serious enough that it affects the way that a person relates to other people, or it affects their ability to do the things that they normally would do. So like they're missing school, or if, if, as, as a teenager, they're missing school, or unable to keep their grades at a certain level, or being so preoccupied with image and, and form and trying to perfect it that they don't do their homework and they don't study and, and so on, or that they miss um, social time with peers, specifically because they are afraid of being rejected because of this perceived flaw. So anything that falls within that realm would be considered disordered behavior. Now also the flip side, uh, you know young girls are now inundated with these images of beauty and mm. size. Mm. And you see from the age of 12, when I go to the gym, I see girls that are 12 and 13 I know. I know. working out in the gym. I and I think, wow, where's your child at 10, 11? I understand sports, yes. but when you're going to a gym to shape your body at 10, yes. 11, 12, really? Yes. You see, um, that is, fortunately, this is actually an area that there's some local research that has been done. So I'm, I'll be speaking from some of the things right. that I've, I've researched and read and so on. One of the strongest indicators of how powerfully those external images will impact a teenager is the family connection that that teenager has and the level of approval that they have from members of their family. And I would like to zone in even further, and the studies didn't say this, but I would say this from personal experience. For a girl in particular, daddy. You see that acceptance and that affirmation from daddy, that daddy thinks I'm pretty, daddy thinks I'm beautiful, daddy loves me, mm -hmm. that is critically important. Because the tide, the tidal wave of images as displayed in that video, will be coming at young persons right. regardless, all right? It's on their phones, it's on their, it's on TV, it's on the internet, it's everywhere, okay? But if that's not balanced with a healthy level of acceptance and a healthy level of affirmation from their family members in particular, then you run the risk of that young person becoming Un, you know, unhealthily preoccupied with their image. If a parent has a child who is at home and maybe preoccupied with weight and size and you see mm -hmm. that teenager, one, changing their eating habits, mm -hmm. being very mm -hmm. conscious of what they put in, yes. are also looking what may be possible signs of bulimia or yes. anorexia yes. and then also killing themselves on yes. an exercise machine, when do you become worried? Because there's this thing as, you know, okay, you can have a, a weight and maybe you're a little conscious yeah. about the extra yeah. pudge. Right, so nothing is wrong with looking after your health, okay? And even as a teenager, I mean, all of us, I experiment, push on little bars and as a teen, all right? <laughs> so I mean, we all do it to some extent. But as I said, when um, a teenager is missing out on interacting with their peers because of preoccupation with perfecting their image, when they are shying away from social situations excessively because of their image, um, when they are 
missing school or instead of being in their room studying, they're in the mirror and only combing the hair and fixing, fixing, fixing and trying to get adjust and, you know, not doing the things that they're supposed to be doing, that's a cause for concern and a parent at that point in time needs to take it a little step further. Anorexia and bulimia, mm -hmm. are they common in Trinidad? You know, we see all these American television yeah, shows yeah. specifically dealing with anorexia. Yes, yes. Uh, how common is it in Trinidad? Okay, so it's not as common here as it is in North America, but again, the studies that I've looked at have said that it is an area of concern that we need to look at because habits have a sometimes unhealthy way of trickling down from the north to us right. down here, okay? And as the, as the world becomes more commercialized and people become, you know, more and more uh, connected and, and more and more affected and influenced by each other, it is worth the concern and note of parents to take a look at it because I think the numbers right now um, on average are found to be below 5% of the teen population, okay? But it's still, that 5% that five is still significant enough to warrant attention. Now, you talk about when a child becomes so preoccupied with their image in terms of if you're a girl mm -hmm. uh, putting on the makeup and curling your hair yes. or splat lining hair, whatever you do. Yes. It affects boys as well, huh? Okay, and that would have been the other question. Yeah. How prevalent is it? Because now, yeah, because with the rise of the Metro Man and the GQ Man, everyone is dapper. Yes, all right? So it affects boys as well, okay? Um, Boys may want, for example, to, 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 to bulk up if they're very skinny because they don't accept, you know, that this is their body at this point in time. So they may want to put on it. And again, you know, nothing is really wrong with the principle, but it is when it begins to interfere with that person's social and functional um, activity. But it's, it's really hard though, and I think especially now for teenagers mm. because it's so prevalent, because people even look at me on television sometimes that I have so many issues that which you know about uh, as it relates to my concept of beauty and images. Mm. Uh, but how do you, you, you kind of instill that in your child, that this is what you see mm. on the photos are not real, yes. that they're photo touch. What you see yeah. here is good lighting, good, yes. good makeup, yeah. it's, you know, it's, yeah. it's here. Well, you know, as a parent, you make it easier for yourself the earlier you begin um, positive reinforcement, um, affirming the child, letting them know how beautiful they are, you know, um, being affectionate with them and so on. The earlier you begin that process, and when I say early, I mean from as early as birth, okay? The earlier you begin that, the easier it gets later on. If you have not been doing that all along and all of a sudden you notice that your child is, you know, very, very, very excessively preoccupied with the image, then you may need to step up in terms of you gonna ask something? But I, you know, then there's a vanity, and then the, I may want to look good. Like I, as gr a child growing up, mm. I always wanted to have my hair done, always wanted to be in makeup. And then I ended up in a job only makeup. Yeah. But you know, it's it's really how do you find when is it become destructive behavior that I, where a mother would say, you know, you are pretty without the makeup. You don't need the makeup to go out. Yes. Because I've been in the gym where I've actually seen a mother calling her child fat. No, that, horrible, that, that, that horrible. Those are things that a mother should never do. Yeah. All right? I mean, you encourage your child to be healthy and to eat healthily and look after themselves. But don't be, you know, attaching negative labels to them, all right? The, the, the problem is there's no barometer that says, okay, if the, if the child um, uh, doesn't do homework three days a week because they're in the mirror, then okay, all right, now there's a problem, right? You can't measure it like that. So it really depends upon how well the parent knows the child Okay, and if they can tell that the child has actually changed their behavior, and I mean this usually occurs over a period of time, and it usually occurs during the teenage years. All right, it occurs a little earlier for girls and boys, by the way. Now you know it's interesting. I saw a video, and I know we have two minutes to so we'll wrap this interview, uh, where they were documenting a, a sort of uh, artist mm. drawing a woman's perception of her body, mm. and <laughs> the reality is so different. Mm. And you see it all it, what what to wear and what not to wear. Yeah. Where people tend to think they're either a lot bigger than they really yeah. are, yes. or their concept of themselves so different. Yes. Why is that? Um, I don't know, but there's many different reasons why, all right? Um, uh, it's an interesting question because generally, I mean, even in, in casual interaction, women always tend to feel as though they are bigger than men see them or that they're, they're, you know, their size somehow or the other, they should be smaller. And very often times, the men are quite comfortable and quite happy with <laughs> <laughs> what they're seeing, right? I think a lot of it has to do with that North American influence, unfortunately, and what you see in the magazines and what you see on Hollywood, because Hollywood in particular is is preoccupied with thinness. Mm -hmm. All right. I remember remember this actress, um, Jennifer Lopez. 
the early films that she did and when she was on television and you know the, the early years. As a dancer, yeah. She yeah was that a that was one size, yeah. all right? Which, which there was no problem with it. All right. <laughs> but she was, yeah, she's also a voluptuous woman. Right. And then, you know, as she became more and more famous, all of a sudden, you know, shrinkage began occurring and she got a lot smaller and you know, you could tell that there was there was probably some external pressure on her to conform to what the industry that she belongs to. Uh, your advice to parents out there for their daughters and sons? Yeah, all, first thing, always know your children, always be close to them, okay? Because that's the only way you're gonna be able to spot if something is happening to them. If you're noticing that they are unhealthily preoccupied with their image, and by unhealthily preoccupied, I mean it's interfering with their social functioning, it's interfering with their occupation, and in this instance, it would be their schooling, their lessons, their studies, their grades, and so on, then you may need to have that conversation with them and take it a step further, have them assessed. Every child is beautiful. And remember to remind your daughters and your sons All that the they're time. perfect no matter what. I'm Hema Ramsey, now take a very short break. And when we come back, we'll have more for you. And really get in contact with Daryl because it's something that's happening a lot. And we're inundated with images of beauty and perfection. And somehow it kind of confuses the children a little bit. Stay with us.